The former House Speaker was on with Dana Bash on CNN. And uh, listen to this, and then we'll just give you some of the greatest hits of... Uh, of John Boner Boehner, whatever his name is. He's looking good, too, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tan. man. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Trump, that's a real tanning bed situation. All right, go All right, ahead. I first want to start uh, with the moment that we're in in this country. We've had yet another mass shooting uh, Thursday night, a couple overnight. Eight people in Indianapolis, that's the one on Thursday, uh, were killed. 47 mass shootings in the United States in just over the last month. And I know you know this poll show the vast majorities of Americans support at least some new gun restrictions. When you were speaker, the, there were 20 first graders who were killed in Newtown, Connecticut. Looking back now, do you regret not passing new gun laws then? And do you want to see Republicans come to the table now at least to pass something? Oh, well, back uh, when Newtown happened, uh, we couldn't find common ground with the other side. And, uh, you know, I heard the earlier segment, and hopefully uh, there's uh, some common ground to be found. Uh, I know that uh, Senator Pat Toomey has been working on this uh, across the aisle, trying to come to some agreement, and hopefully they'll find uh, some common ground, because uh, this is, uh, it's, frankly, it's, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. Uh, I think it's embarrassing uh, uh, our country to the rest of the world, and uh, we've got to find a way to deal with this problem. So this would be a top priority for you, where you st if you were still Speaker of the House. Why'd she give that to uh, him? If, uh, but I'm not. So those in power uh, now are going to have to figure out uh, what can be done. Uh, it's not about what everybody wants. It's a matter of what can be accomplished in a bipartisan way. What a, First, what a lazy question. I, I mean, or deliberate in order to just kind of wash the Republican Party of the history pre Trump, which is seemingly the media. That's exactly operation. that's yeah. exactly what it is, because I mean, look, she clearly knew she was going to ask that question and she could have. I mean, yeah, the Manchin right. Toomey bill in 2013. Here's Alex McGill, Alex McGillis. In April 2013, he tweeted out Politico headline when Congress was closer than it had been in years to passing major gun leg uh, law legislation. This is, uh, you know, uh, f uh, months, a uh, year after Sandy Town, more or less, months after Sandy Town. Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, excuse me. Um, and uh, political headline House Speaker John Boehner cast serious doubt Wednesday on whether he would bring the Senate's gun control uh, bill to a vote. Dave Weigel at the time. Boehner opposed any gun bill action in the House, saying he'd see what the Senate passed. And, of course, it led to nothing because of the Senate filibuster. But the bottom line is, had he passed it, it would have put pressure on the Republicans in the Senate. The, the idea that, like, none of this, everything is, you know, like, everything. This is the way that people avoid doing anything, which is they say that it's sort of a fait accompli and it is what it is. And there's nothing I can do. And if you're the Speaker of the House, there is something you can do. That's just the bottom line. Well, <clears throat> this is a part of the his his rewrite history media tour that the media is entirely complicit in. And, and it's not just I think you hit the nail on the head. It's not just about him. This is a way of making the Republican Party look like it was sane pre Donald Trump. Because he's this last speaker of the House, right, pre-Donald Trump. This is a way to make the, the Republican Party look like they were not the lunatics that they are still today. And Dana Bash was covering this fight post-Sandy Hook and how outrageous the Republicans' position she on this better, was. Of course. Yeah, I mean, Boehner didn't bring up a bill in order to not put pressure on the Senate, Republicans, and so they were able to just kind of despite months, I would say, of liberal outrage, diffused the situation. And now he's going to try to pretend like he had no power to push that conversation forward. Th there was agreement between Senate and House Republicans on how to tackle this. He wasn't just some rogue actor, you know, like he was complicit in a Republican strategy that downplayed any um, chance of, of gun control. And so now he's saying it would be at the top of his list of priorities. Please, him and Mitch McConnell together. You really, really? Exactly. Give me a break. And and he does. I mean, Brendan said he looks like a 
a, a dried tomato. I mean, he's in Florida now. I hope he's enjoying that retirement. He looks like a, like a walking. Well, he's not retired. Let's be clear. He's retired from the house, but he's um, uh, working. Um, he looks like he's doing a lot of work to, laying uh, by the pool. <laughs> he's making a lot of phone calls. This is a way to make sure that he gets right. back out there and make yeah. a couple more phone calls and seal the deal. Um, Needs a couple more mil.